Hey guys, today I'm going to do my best at explaining how to use the mortars in Armor Reforger. I'm going to be using the American mortar to explain, but I don't think the American mortar and the Soviet mortar have much differences. So I assume you can also apply this to Soviet mortars. The video will be split into chapters, so skip around if you wish. The first thing you want to do is find your mortar location. Now doing this is pretty simple. You're going to want to identify three landmarks. This could be radio towers, churches, gas stations, and more as long as they are on the map. I identified Tower Entredu. I know this is Tower Entredu because I can see on the bottom right it says I am near Province. Province is decently close to Tower Entredu. I am now going to place a mark on this spot. Make sure you place your marks privately by tapping X on Xbox just to make sure you aren't annoying your team with a bunch of marks. The second landmark I see is the Tower Water Tower and Montagnac. I'm going to mark it just as I did with the other landmark. Now we just need one more. There is the Montagnac Church. That is our third one, so I am going to mark it. Make sure when placing marks you zoom all the way in and get as close as possible. Now once you have all three of your marks on the map, you're going to want to equip your compass. Aim your compass at a landmark and look at the black outer numbers on the compass. This is what you will need to pay attention to. These numbers are called mills. Tower Entree Dugo is around 490 mills, so I will just edit my marker and put that down so I don't forget. Next landmark is the water tower. That looks like it's on the 62, so it is 6,200 mils. Another thing to keep in mind is that you should add two zeros after you get your mils from the compass. Let's say the compass reads three, then you will add two zeros to get 300 mils. Now for the last one, which is the church. It looks like it is 5,800 mils to me. We have everything set, now we just need to bring out the protractor. Try to get the point as close to the center as you can. Now the outer numbers in the protractor are also mills. Since the church is 5,800 mills, I will need to bring out the pencil tool and drag a line from the dash at 58 all the way past the center point. Make sure you bring this line as far past the center point as you can while still making it as accurate as possible. Now of course, it won't go perfectly through the point, but that is fine, as long as you get it close. Now I will do the same thing for the other two landmarks. Now that I'm done, I can find my lower mortar location. In the center of the three lines is where I am located. Be sure to place a mark there, calling it mortar so you don't forget. Now that it is marked, you should be okay to erase all lines and delete the landmark points. Now I will explain the easiest way to skip this whole process. Now as you can see, I am obviously at military base levy, so I can just skip that whole process since I know where I am. I can see I am next to two buildings on the road. 
I know where these buildings are on the map, therefore, I know exactly where I am. I will just mark my location as Mortar. This is by far way easier than actually pinpointing where you are. Now that you know where you are, let's get into the next step. The second thing we're going to want to do is find your target location and measure how far it is from your location. Here I want to check this house so I'll mark it privately on the map and label it as target. Once I'm done, I will then bring out the pencil tool and draw a line from the mortar past the target. Be sure to zoom in all the way while doing this. Also make sure to bring the line as far past the target as you can while still staying, staying zoomed in. Now I will start the measurements by bringing out the protractor. Bring the protractor to the center of the mortar location. Get it as close as possible as you guys know from the last step. The outer numbers on both the compass and protractor are mills. I can see that the red line goes to the dash right next to this 56. Each small dash is 20 mils. So this is 5,620 mils. I know this because if I take 56 and add two zeros, I get 5,600 mils. Adding this small dash, which is 20 mils, gets me 5,620 mils. Now once you get your number, be sure to place a private marker on the map so you don't forget what it is. I suggest also adding direct, which means direction, just because this number is a direction in mils that the mortar will need to face. I accidentally moved the protractor so I will just move it back. No big deal if this happens. Next step would be rotating the protractor by holding RB on Xbox and moving it along the joist along with the joystick. Just get that line that is labeled as N to connect the red line. Now you can drag the protractor over and make sure the zero meter mark on the ruler is at the mortar. Make sure to zoom all the way in to get as in it as accurate as possible. Just like the protractor, add two zeros to the numbers on the ruler so at the one thousand meter mark just take the pencil tool and write a line going through the dash, just like this. Now reposition the protractor and make sure the zero meter mark is at the red line you just created. That is now 1000 meters measured. Each of those dashes between the numbers are 10 meters. We can see that the target is in between 3 and 4, meaning it is going to be somewhere between 1300 and 1400 meters. The target is in between the 7th and 8th dash, meaning that the mortar and target, the mortar and target are roughly 1,275 meters away from each other. We now have our measurements and we can mark this on the map to make sure we don't forget. You can get rid of the protractor and pencil tool as we won't be needing it anymore. Now I'm going to get on the mortar. Those numbers on the bottom is the direction in mils that the mortar is facing. Earlier we marked it on the map as 5,620 mils, so I will now apply that number on the bottom. The mortar is now facing the direction of the target. The reason we got the distance between the mortar location and the target location is for the numbers on the left. I will now get into that in the next step. I created this image to better explain how mortar elevation works. The mortar represents the mortar, obviously, and the tank is the target. You can move the mortar tube up and down. This is the elevation that, and it is in mils. The higher the elevation in mils means that the shell will take longer to land and it will land in a shorter range. Looking at this image, we can see that the mortar is now farther from the target. We will now have to lower the mortar tube, which lowers the elevation in mils. Since they are farther apart, we cannot go as far up in elevation because if that happens, the shell will land short. The elevation needs to be lower in order to hit its target due to the long distance. First, I am going to go ahead and grab the ballistics manual from this crate. You need this in order to shoot the mortars accurately. On the left here is the range, which we measured earlier to be 1,375 meters. M stands for meters. 1,400 is the highest possible range that I can go to, and 1,300 is the lowest possible range. This is because 1,375 is in between them. I will cycle through the pages until the highest possible range, which is 1,400, disappears. On the top right, it says one ring. 1,400 is no longer visible, so I'll now go backwards and stop once it's visible. Okay, so two rings is the page I want to be on. Now I can start the conversion process to determine the precise elevation needed. The second part of the table is the elevation for the mortar tube. 
The first thing we want to do is find the highest possible elevation and subtract it by the lowest possible elevation. The highest possible elevation is right next to the lowest possible range, and the lowest possible elevation is right next to the highest possible range. I will now subtract these two numbers to get 56. I will now take the last two digits of the meters measured, meters I measured, and put that next to 56. The meters I measured was 1,375, so I will take 75 and put that next to 56 as a percentage. 75% of 56 equals 42. Now I will subtract 42 by the highest possible elevation to get 1,090 mils. The reason why I do that process is to find the perfect amount of mils needed instead of rounding 1,375 to 1,400 and using 1,076 mils. We now have 1,090 which will allow us to be much more accurate. You can feel free to pause and take a picture of this screenshot or screenshot of this formula because it is very helpful in getting accurate calculations. Trust me, once you get used to this and understand it, it becomes very easy to do. I'm now going to place a mark on the map which is labeled 1090 mils elevation just so I don't forget. This is our precise elevation for the mortar tube in mils. Now we can move on to calculating for the elevation difference between the mortar location and the target location, which would be our final process in calculating. It shows the mortar location elevated above the target location. Elevation is very important, so it's important you understand its impact. The original precise shot, which is labeled in the picture, is where the shell would land if he did not account for elevation. We can see that it is off even though it shouldn't be. The reason it is off because the mortar location is elevated above the target location. Not raising the elevation of the mortar tube when the location is higher than the target location will result in an overshot. Because the shot is overshot, we will need to raise the mortar's elevation. The reason we should raise it is because the higher mortar's elevation means the shorter the shell will fall. And the lower of mortar's elevation means that the shell will fall further. So whenever a mortar's location elevation is higher than the target location elevation, you need to increase the elevation of the mortar to prevent it from overshooting. This image shows the target location being higher in elevation than the mortar location elevation. The original precise shot undershots, as we can see, because the target is elevated. The reason why it hasn't hit the target is because we haven't accounted for elevation difference between the mortar location and the target location. When we account for elevation difference, the shot lands. Because we have undershot the target, we need to bring the mortar tube elevation down. This will allow the shell to go further, and it will then hit the target. So whenever a mortar's location lo elevation is lower than the target location elevation, we need to lower the mortar tube's elevation. First, I'm going to take the lowest possible elevation change in elevation per 100 meters of distance, and I will subtract that by the highest possible elevations change in elevation per 100 meters of distance. This will give me 4. I will now take the last two digits of the meters I have measured, which is 75, because we measured 1,375 meters. I have 75. Now we'll take. Now we will find out whatever 75% of 4 is. 75% of 4 equals 3. I will now take the highest possible elevations change in elevation per 100 meters of distance, and I will add 3 to that. So it is 27 plus 3. This equals 30. 30 is the change in elevation per 100 meters of distance that we will be using. We now want to divide 30 by 100 to get 0 0.3. Now let's pause here because we now need to get the elevation difference between the two locations. As you can see on the cursor, it shows the elevation elevations on both locations in meters. We just now have to take the 160, which is the mortar location elevation, and subtract by 85, which is the target location elevation. This will give us the elevation difference. The elevation difference equals 75 meters. We now want to take 0 0.3 and multiply it by 75 to get 22.5. Rounding this number gives us 23. We will label 23 as a variable E. Using the rule that states, if mortar location is higher than target location elevation, then add E to precise elevation. We will get our answer. If we follow this and add 23 to 1090, then we will get 1113 mils as our new precise elevation. I am now going to edit the old precise elevation mark and correct it. As you can see, I accidentally put 1112 mils as the precise elevation instead of 1113. This is a minor mistake and won't change much, but this is just shows that mistakes do happen when doing this, but hopefully they aren't major mistakes.
The math is done, and now you know how to account for elevation difference. Now let's move on to the final step, which is firing the mortar. Now for the final step, just simply firing the mortar. Make sure your mortar is at the correct elevation and direction. Once that is done, make sure you have the correct amount of rings on the shelf. For me, it has two rings. Rings can be changed just by holding Y and X box and changing it. After you set an amount of rings on a shell, they will auto save for every other shell, so you only have to do it once. I am in Game Master mode, so I will go ahead and check out the area. I am striking to see how accurate. Look at that, the first shot is dead on the house. The reason the second shot wasn't on the house is because anytime you shoot the mortar, it will move around, so you have to reposition it. I suggest repositioning after every two shots. Mortaring is also more effective with multiple people doing it at the same time. Hopefully this guy can help you land your shots more accurately. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section.